Hello, it's a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Judy Siebert. I'm born and raised in the heartland in the United States in Iowa. And it's been a great place to live, except perhaps in the winter time when it gets bitterly cold on occasion. But as I thought about Expect a Miracle and the different things that have happened in my life, I was delighted to have been exposed over now nearly 30 years of different concepts and universal laws and perspectives that have definitely got me through some hard times. Many of which I could share, but only, only one very positive story I'm going to share about my daughter. But without a doubt, it's these lessons, it's these principles that have made a difference and carried me through the hard times. And I'm very happy to say I've been able to share these with other people and seen them carried through hard times. One of the stories and one of the perspectives that resonated with me was the whole idea of affluence, currency, abundance, and a right to um, express our full potential in all that we do. Sometimes it's tough to believe in our own potential. Sometimes it's tough to live it. It's also very hard, as I'm sure many of you can understand, to believe that there is affluence when life is going a little bit rough and tough. Well, I'll share this story with my daughter, who was exposed to many of these lessons through wonderful, wonderful people, including Chicken Soup for the Soul, Mark Victor Hansen. Um, people in health professions might know Dr. Jim Parker. I could mention Norman Vincent Peale. I could go on and on and on with many wonderful foundational people. So Jennifer, our daughter, had been exposed to these ideas. And I had always encouraged her, and my husband as well, speakers she'd heard, books she'd read, to think in terms of abundance. Lovely young woman, goes through high school, and is a volleyball player. She's a tall girl, athletic, very capable, very intelligent, and she's playing volleyball. And she says to me, Mom, I need another check. And I says, what for? Well, I'm in the volleyball, the club volleyball, and so I need another check, Mom, for, for volleyball. And I'm like, how much this time? You know, 150 here, 200 there, 225, then I've got 40 for this outfit, then who knows how much for shoes, and it's just like, oh my gosh, this is a bottomless pit. All right, so now this is a junior high kid. At this point, she's in about eighth grade. And she says, Mom, I need a check again. And I'm like, Phew, writing it. Ninth grade, writing checks over and over and over. We get to 10th grade or so, and Jennifer says, Mom, I need another check. And I'm like, man, this club volleyball thing is really expensive. I'm writing her another check, and I'm thinking, lovely pastime, it's keeping you fit, but good grief, this is a lot of money. She looks at me, virtually takes me by the wrist and says, Mom, you don't get it. I'm going to go to college with this mom. Oh, I'm going to get a scholarship, mom. Okay, where do I sign, right? This completely repositioned me. She had a goal and she had a perspective of abundance with these efforts that I didn't get at all from her. So what I do is I go ahead and I write her this check. God bless this marvelous young woman. She goes on through college, I mean through high school, gets a full ride. Division One Volleyball Scholarship. This is a big deal for any of you not in the United States. Division One is the top-notch university level for athletes. Jennifer gets this full ride Division One Volleyball Scholarship. This is worth probably thirty to forty thousand dollars a year for four years. But she's redshirted the first year, which is the story I'm going to tack into here. She ends up with five years of college from the scholarship. <laughs> and it was worth the investment. But her vision of where she could go and what she could do with this was so much greater than my own. So the lessons I had been teaching her, I hadn't absorbed myself necessarily, but she had, and they were completely a part of her person. Now life goes on with, with my daughter. When she gets to her senior year, all of us in the family, my husband, our son, Jennifer, and myself, we had a, a horrible car accident. Um, I won't go into the details on that particular accident, which is another very long story, which can be remain for another time, but Jennifer was seriously hurt in this accident. At that time, she had not yet signed for this full ride Division I volleyball scholarship, in fact. And with her injuries and the surgery she ended up having, her leg was broken so badly, she had a very compound fracture in her ankle, her knee, her lower leg, and there was a very good chance she might not actually even walk again. Fortunately, the doctor that was on call for this accident was the head 
surgeon for these type of injuries for the University of Iowa's football team. He happened to be the man on call. His daughter happened to be a classmate of our son at the same high school as our daughter Jennifer. Our son was killed in the car accident. That's how serious the accident was. And Jennifer was at risk of never walking again. I was I was fortunate not to pass out in the accident and essentially to have been the one who virtually walked away. It was a winter driving accident, no one's fault. And through all of this, Jennifer maintained a positive attitude, came back from the surgery. The University of Missouri still signed Jenny to this full ride division one volleyball scholarship. And it said so much for the university. When Jenny finally got back to playing, that's why she ended up with five years. She was redshirted, which is what they do with recovering athletes. Jennifer went back to play, and through the course of that playing, tore her ACL in her other leg. So now we have a young woman that has gone through junior high school, focused on volleyball, dedicated to getting this scholarship, has a horrible accident that she recovers from, but might not have walked, loses her little brother, she maintains a positive attitude through all of this, becomes an incredible model to her friends and relatives, and she also, be, and her classmates, of course. Jennifer and Eric also become an amazing model to their classmates. Our son, Eric, who died, his classmates said to me, and Eric amazingly had been exposed to these same lessons, they said to me, you know, Eric always made me feel good about myself, and I recognized that these lessons, he had impact others, like the, the stone on the pond.